Welcome to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. I'm Tony Guerra, pharmacist and author of the Memorizing Pharmacology book series, bringing you mnemonics, cases, and advice for succeeding in pharmacology. Sign up for the email list at memorizingpharm.com to get your free suffixes cheat sheet or find our mobile-friendly, self-paced online pharmacology review course at residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash mobile. Let's get started with the show. Hey, welcome to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. Uh, this one is on alpha agonists. Uh, mnemonic is POPCAN. And the idea is just to remember a couple of medications that maybe are a little bit different uh, so that we can kind of compare and contrast and do that kind of thing. So when we look at alpha-1 agonists, we think of pseudofedrin, which is pseudofed, oxymetazolin, which is afrin, and phenylephrine, which is neosinephrine. And there aren't really stems. The only stem here is pseudofedrin, which has that DRIN sympathomimetic stem, which just means it works like the sympathetic system. Uh, but specifically, it's the alpha-1 uh, that's the big deal. And we'll look at that mechanism of action specifically on the alpha receptor. So pseudofedrin or the pseudofed, it's usually an oral tablet that you're going to take, uh, this stimulates alpha receptors systemically. So it's going to go throughout the whole body. The nice thing about oxymetazolin, which is afrin, and phenylephrine, which is neosinephrine, uh, they both stimulate alpha receptors locally in the nose, so you don't get as much of that uh, issue with uh, cardiac contraindications and so forth. So um, again, uh, anybody that has heart issues, they're going to be very wary about using either of these medications, but all three result in vasoconstriction and decongestion and our adjuncts for allergic rhinitis treatment. So the, the big kind of take home thing is if you've got vasoconstriction, you've got a little bit increase in blood pressure uh, and uh, that's something you don't want uh, with a cardiac patient. But when you talk about side effects though, really with pseudofedrin, it's more excitability and nervousness, uh, just kind of a jitteriness. Rarely you're gonna see something like tachycardia um, oxymetazolin, afrin, and phenylephrine, neosinephrine. Um, the big thing here is that rebound congestion, and it's possible around three days, you might see four or five days, whatever, but it's called rhinitis medicamentosa. So that's the actual name for that rebound congestion. And if something like that does happen, uh, you may need to take uh, an oral steroid, or you may need to um, have a steroid in such a way that we go one nostril at a time, but uh, that rebound congestion is very real. Uh, contraindications, really it comes down to those uh, cardiac issues, so uh, angina, coronary artery disease, and hypertension. Uh, because it's CAD, coronary artery disease, it also just happens to be uh, closed angle glaucoma, uh, which is the more more concerning uh, type of glaucoma, and either of those uh, would definitely be a contraindication to, to using these types of medications. Uh, the alpha-2, you know, the can of the pop can mnemonic, so when you think pop, you think, okay, well, once my nose clears, it kind of pops open, uh, but the can part is just to remind you that C and N are in clonidine, and clonidine has a couple of brand names that might help you remember what it's for. Uh, catapress, so if you think of catabolizing blood pressure, uh, and then catapress TTS was the patch uh, that also helped with blood pressure. And then catve, uh, which is for ADHD, or that's how it's marketed. But the mechanism of action is quite a bit different. So it stimulates an alpha-2 receptors that decreases norepinephrine. So norepinephrine would normally bind to alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, so you get a decrease in blood pressure. And that seems a little bit counterintuitive to say I'm stimulating something, but I'm decreasing. So that's just the big thing is that it's stimulating alpha-2, it's kind of shutting off the norepinephrine uh, faucet, and that's why blood pressure decreases. Okay. Uh, indications include hypertension, ADHD, you know, tics and Tourette um, syndrome. Uh, it can be an adjunct for cancer pain. It can also be an adjunct for neonatal opioid withdrawal syndrome. Uh, but again, uh, not the safest drug in the world, not something we use a ton uh, anymore, but to be complete, to have an alpha agonist and not to go into those super uh, medications that have many 
many alphas and betas. Uh, this one is the alpha 2 prototype. And then adverse effects, what you would expect when you lose epinephrine, you would expect a decrease in blood pressure, and that decrease in blood pressure tends to result in some dizziness and some lightheadedness, uh, but also quite a bit of fatigue. Um, imagine that you're trying to turn on the system to increase your you know, heart rate and blood pressure and all those things, only to find out that the faucet for that particular neurotransmitter is not available. So uh, anyway, just a reminder uh, with uh, all these, uh, this is just informational purposes. This is not medical advice. If you've got a medical problem, contact a medical professional. Thanks for listening to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. You can find episodes, cheat sheets, and more at memorizingpharm.com. Again, you can sign up for the email list at memorizingpharm.com to get your free suffixes cheat sheet or find our mobile-friendly, self-paced online pharmacology review course at residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash mobile. Thanks again for listening.